All right, so let's say you've got somebody with a really nasty metabolic acidosis, and you decide that you're going to treat them with some sodium bicarbonate, and somebody gets the genius idea that let's just push the bicarb on them. So the question is, if you push sodium bicarbonate, does it work, and how long does it work? Let's take a step back. So an idiot's guide to metabolic acidosis and reversal. Metabolic acidosis, too much circulating hydrogen ion. You can reverse that by giving a base. The base will uh, interact with the hydrogen ion and hopefully neutralize it. The most common base we use is sodium bicarbonate. Bicarbonate combines with the hydrogen. You wind up getting carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid. It associates into water and carbon dioxide. You exhale the carbon dioxide, done. You've solved the problem. Maybe. If you give the sodium bicarbonate as a bolus, it will combine with the hydrogen ion, you will get your carbonic acid, you will exhale your carbon dioxide, but it won't last very long. And you can prove that real easily, and this is how you can prove it. If you take someone who's on a ventilator and has a metabolic acidosis, and for example someone with DKA, you've intubated them, they've got a bad metabolic acidosis, and somebody gets the bright idea of pushing bicarbonate on them, what you will see is because they have a fixed tidal volume, you're ventilating them, they're paralyzed, their tidal volume is basically controlled by you, what will happen is when you push the sodium bicarbonate, all of the carbon dioxide that's generated will be exhaled and can be picked up by the end tidal carbon dioxide monitor. So if you have an end tidal CO2 monitor on that patient, you'll see a rise in the CO2 as the bicarbonate neutralizes the hydrogen ion. Here's a freeze frame of the monitor for a patient with DKA who is intubated in the emergency department. He's paralyzed, and you can see the bottom waveform of the capnometer. It's the yellow line at the bottom where you can see the inspired and expired carbon dioxide. The patient had a pH of 6.9 and some change, so the ER team decided to start them on a bicarb drip. As is usually the case, there was no space in the ICU, so the ICU team came down and began to take over his care. Uh, they felt that because of the pH that it would be better if the patient received the sodium bicarb as a bolus, so recommended two bicarb boluses for the patient. What you can see here is what happens when the bicarb is pushed. You can see the end tidal CO2 rise. You can see the quantitative level on the right. As the numbers go up, you can see the waveform increase. And it looks like you've solved your problem. You've given the bicarb, you've neutralized the hydrogen, you're exhaling the carbon dioxide, everything looks perfect. And it is for about a couple seconds because if you watch, you can see it goes right back down to the baseline. Usually lasts about 25 to 30 seconds. And you can see you're pretty much right back where you started from. So although you neutralized some hydrogen ion, you really didn't get any sustained effect at all. Not to be dissuaded, it was decided that it wasn't that uh, the problem was with the bicarb being pushed, it was that there wasn't enough bicarb push. So a second amp was given. And again, you can see that the waveform demonstrates the carbon dioxide being exhaled, meaning that the hydrogen ion is being neutralized, their pH must be changing, except for the fact that it does the same thing again. It drops right back down to the baseline. So if you're going to push sodium bicarbonate, you'll get a wonderful response but it's only going to last about 25 to 30 seconds, which really doesn't do the patient much good. That's why the better way to treat it is to drip the, the sodium bicarbonate in. You'll get a nice sustained release as opposed to that big peak that goes away just as quickly when you push it as a bolus. And that's it, guys. 